Yeah. Right. Ready, boys? Missing 
playing the ghost Employee of the year We have to let you go This on severance We hope you understand Lamb to the slaughter Hold up my head Taking in the warmth Before the drain is dead The severance We hope you understand
ever fly except for the crows is the street of a lifted Lorax. Deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax stood as long as he could till they chopped him down with the rest of the world. Now, who was the Lorax? Why was he there in a decade from now? <laughs> Anyone care?
Welcome to the Pop Off Podcast. I'm Derek. And I'm Matt, and we're here with Fool's, Fool's End. End. Uh, my name is Josh. I'm the vocalist. I play bass and guitar. I'm Joey. I'm the drummer. And I'm Aaron. I play guitar and sing sometimes. So Full Send, kind of a cheeky name. It's like the modern Full Send, like going, going all the way, Red Bull. But also the F-O-O-L, the Fool and when you guys showed up, even maximize more, we see we have like a tarot card themed shirt on the drummer. Clearly a funny hat to let them know that somebody here is a fool. Yeah. Uh, how'd you come up with that name? You want to expand on any of that or is that pretty much it? Uh, so me and Josh kind of started this thing a little while ago, maybe a year and a half ago or so. And, uh, you know, the gig just running through names, trying to find something that sounds cool. And uh, somewhere along the line, we came out around Fool's End, like a fool. And, uh, and then <laughs> we started thinking about like the Supreme logo and just kind of how ridiculous <laughs> it is. Oh, yeah. yeah, I remember and seeing so that. And then the first. Fool's End, bro. Yeah. So we ended up with uh, kind of a mixture of both. It's ambiguous. Yeah. Fool's End, Fool's End. Yeah, and I feel like it's a nice play on words just because like the people that do that typically like, are doing foolish things. So yeah, yeah. it's a Fool's End because <laughs> true. it doesn't always end well. It's also <laughs> a Fool's End because we can't pick a, a genre to yeah, play. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're all over the place, but we love it. So. I personally enjoyed that. You played a good amount of music for us today, which was really nice, and it was nice hearing you guys like jump around. You even made that like joke at the end before the last song. You're like, "All right, do time for a vibe change." <laughs> so it, it's nice. Like a lot of the bands that we come on, they have like their very distinctive sound, and it's like they're strictly a punk band, they're strictly you know a metal band. So it's cool that you guys have that wide spectrum, and then making so much sound for just the three of you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we that. actually uh, we usually play guitar songs as well. I just didn't want to kind of switch between. <laughs> Yeah, this started out as an acoustic duo, and then it yeah. became Yep, this. I joined. Got some rhythm in there. Yeah, yeah. I, I do personally appreciate the bass player that also sings. That's been, you know, I always enjoy that. And I feel like you're in better control of the direction of the music and, and how things yeah. unfold in the song. Yeah. So yeah. when you guys are going through your songwriting process, uh, I mean, is it a group effort? Is someone kind of leading the charge? Do you come up with music first, then lyrics, or other way around? What's that look like? So typically... I feel like Aaron always comes up with like a nice stem. It's like, hold up, I like the, I love the sound of this. And then we'll kind of jam on it and I, I'll improvise words. And I usually focus more on the words first and then the bass line comes after. And then Joey just hops on, starts doing things on drums. Yep. And from there we'll start to build it. Usually we'll pick a mode or we'll pick the next things for the bridge or chorus and construct it during practice typically. Sometimes we revisit it after a few weeks if we just don't have it that time. 
That's typically how it goes, I think. Yeah, that's actually kind of backwards from what I hear a lot of bands do. Like, usually the, the lyrics are the last part, though. Oh. You know what I mean? Usually people like the, the jam comes. Um, something that stuck out to me, I think you're talking about Lorax or some like... Uh, the Lorax. You've got, yeah, some... Uh, um, who's that guy? Dr. Dr. Seuss? Seuss? Um, yes. Okay. Is that... Is that which, which you guys playing yeah. with that there? So, there was just one day, like, typically... Aaron will come over after work and we'll just noodle around for a Friday night and then we have band practice Saturday. And he started playing this like eerie riff. And I just started thinking about like Dr. Seuss books. And he was alive and you know, wrote those in the 80s, 90s. I was like, I wonder what he'd think of this state of the world today. <laughs> so I just revisited each of his books and just kind of colored each verse line based on that and where those characters would be. And Lorax yeah. gets cut down with his trees, yeah. the fish die from the BP oil spill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. so that's awesome there's actually a lot that makes sense there's so much there from dr seuss that you mm -hmm. can pull from that's yeah. that's a good idea yeah. yeah so how long have you guys been playing together as a group i know you said you started as an acoustic duo but how long has this been going on i'd say a, a, year? a little over a year yeah, yeah, yeah a little a year. over a year yeah. Yeah. I think he showed up around May last year. Yeah. Well, I know you guys got that one song about getting uh, released from work, being furloughed, something like that. So I was uh -huh. like, was, was this like a COVID experience that you guys <laughs> had and drew from? Or is that just yeah. uh, uh, That song in particular? Like, like, like the lyrics you mean? Yeah. Year. yeah. I, I envision just, I feel like just work culture nowadays, like especially like with corporations, I feel like you can work for 20 years and then they can just let you go like that. So the idea of a severance, yeah. I kept saying during the chorus, was just kind of a vision. Like the my parents told us to we need to off. work yeah. at one job and just be loyal to it. But are they loyal to you? So it's kind of yeah. It feels like we've kind of lost the unity in, in society there, mm -hmm. and it's kind of yeah. all for Definitely. one. Yeah. But you mentioned too, and, and I want to shout out y'all. Know, these guys came in from Orlando, and I appreciate you making the trip. And you Thank you for having too. us. Yeah, no problem. What, but, but I also mentioned the music scene there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I appreciate anybody playing real music with drums and guitars and, and making that. And it's, you know, in the future, it's not like it was 20 years ago. You've got electronic no. music. I yeah. mean, hip hop's huge. There's so many different genres of music. So, I mean, what, what's your experience just being a, like, I guess a classic style band? Yeah, I mean, at least in Orlando, from our kind of perspective, it's, 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 it's tough for, you know, this style of thing right now. Everybody's into the, the electronic scene and all that kind of stuff. So anything downtown Orlando is just it's, EDM, it's, yeah, it's dead. dance music, which is cool. But, um, you know, it, it, it leaves a, a, a small gap for, for us to try and find our way around. It's not quite the 60s where, you know, you could play at any <laughs> bar. And, and, and do, do you see that they're like DJs that go do it or are they producers? Because, I mean, there is a difference between like getting band members, getting musicians out there to play versus just... You know, you're at a bar with some background music. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it's. I'd say it would. I would say it'd be at a bar with a background music, more like just one guy with his mix and him yeah. up there just rapping. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, which is again nothing wrong with that, but it, it's that's basically the scene right now. I mean, new original music struggling everywhere. Like most live bands, like give up on it eventually and just start doing the cover thing because yeah, that's, it's that's like it. so yeah, much easier that's to get cover say. work. Um, but you guys have just awesome sound i really enjoyed the lyrics and, and, and what you guys are coming up with and again i like that you're not pigeonholed into the one sound uh one thing that really blew me away was your guitar over here oh, and you, i think this just looks so wild it has like ocean vibes it's got crazy swirls i don't know if you guys can see it on camera but uh you know we were chatting at the end and told me he made this thing himself so i need to get the story behind the strat yeah so it actually kind of started as a uh <laughs> a project in high school uh, we had this uh, senior project everybody had to do in your senior year, and if you didn't do it or didn't pass the project, you got held back from, <laughs> from graduating, which is insane. Um, so, yeah, so basically I ended up uh, deciding that I wanted to, you know, build out a guitar. So I uh, found uh, this, it, it was a beat-up, old, cheap Strat uh, Squire at a garage sale, and then from there I was just like, oh, well, let's scrap that dirty black paint on there and uh, try to do something cool. So I had a fortunate connection in my life at the time who was able to get me some really expensive paint and had a nice shop and everything. So got a pearl uh, pearl uh, coat underneath this blue and then just sprayed this kind of electric blue on there. And as it was kind of halfway drying, took a bunch of saran wrap and just gave it that little frosty look to it, which was cool. And then from there, just kind of, you know. 
Now I see you're missing your volume knob here at the top. Is that accidental, or is that, that a is that a pro move because you got tired of just strumming too hard I, and killing your volume I would while say playing? It's a, yeah, let's call it a pro move. I like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I got just tired of these these knobs. Just they they're at least mine. They're super loose, and I'm not smart enough to deal with what's in there. So <laughs> so I guess no you say it's like a yeah, every time you nail that freaking yeah. volume knob. So I was like, I don't care, dude. Just take the cap off. Doesn't go nowhere, and it's still—it's much easier for me to dial from here. So I was just like, yeah, that works for it, me. It's just the number one strat complaint. Like people just like get into it, and they just like kill the volume while yeah. they play. Yeah. Uh, so I was wondering if that was intentional oh, yeah. uh, or just happened over the 100%, years. One hundred percent. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Very, very yeah. cool. Yeah. Appreciate I don't know. This is a little fun fact. So we didn't even start playing plugged in until about a year ago when he joined the band because he used to just play unplugged acoustic with a nylon and a steel string. And then we bought amps finally and like bought electric yep. instruments. And it was a totally different change up because of the dynamics when you're actually plugged in versus yeah. playing in a room mic'd up. It feels so cool when, when you hit any note going through an amplifier and there's just oh, so much yeah. more you know power coming out than, than input yeah. you come in. Because you feel it on acoustic. Like, I'm going to play hard, oh, yeah. but then you your muscles and your fingers, you know, so yeah. Yeah, electric is so much fun. Well, yeah. especially the bass guitar, like you really feel that low end through the oh, amp. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it, it's cool that you adapted to the bass. You said you've only been doing that for a few months now. After yeah, I started back in like October. Um, we had a show in October where we both played guitar and we've been wanting a bassist. It's just really hard to come by them, especially in Orlando. Yep. And I was like, reliability. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a big deal. Yeah. And it's yeah. another person you have to meet up every weekend and go through a song with. So I was like, I'm just going to try it out. If you um, want it done right. Yeah, yeah. and well, he, he did it himself, and he's, he's fantastic. We have I, a I, working like his I love his bass playing. Thank so, you so much. Yeah, you're great. Well, we have a working theory that, like, every bass guitar player is just a guitar player that just wanted to book more gigs. Dude, yep. <laughs> My first Feels band. Sad. Oh, yeah. I was like, I, there's four guitar players in this room. I'm going to find a bass, and I'll just play that. Oh, uh, Dude, that actually happened to us. You know, we used to jam with a bunch of friends back in the day, and we had like, a bunch of people in our house. Some of them were on the drums. I had, like, five buddies all playing guitar. And one of my friends was like, dude, this is a wall of trouble. Like, it's obnoxious. And Derek's yep, like, got a oh. keyboard. Get a, get a bass. Get something to get in the mix differently. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. Um, yeah, I know you guys said you had a couple songs on Spotify. You've got some stuff coming out. Um, you want to just plug your socials or anything else where you can be found? Yeah, so uh, we have a uh, TikTok account. It's Full Zen at TikTok. Um, same with the Instagram account, Full Zen. Just search that. F-O-O-L-S-E-N-D. Yes. Uh, search that as well. And, um, Spotify. Spotify as well. Yes, we are on Spotify and uh, YouTube. Yeah, you got a, a couple And YouTube, yeah. So you, mm -hmm. if you have uh, YouTube Music, Apple Music, and Spotify, that's where you guys can find yeah. us two, well. sing two singles right now. We've got uh, Save Some Face, which we opened the set with, and uh, Squatch. It's an odd 10-minute jam that was can, just... Can, yeah, can we take some time to please explain Squash? <laughs> yeah, just please. so it's out there in the ether. So it might be a little... Uh, it's not exactly friendly to everyone's ears on the first listen, but uh, it was kind of just a, a, a jam that happened magically one day where just all the way through there was nothing... Nothing happened wrong. Nobody knew what we were doing, but it just perfectly kind of flowed for 10 minutes. And uh, we were just like, dude, this has to go somewhere. And, and Josh over here is talking about my socks I was wearing. So we're... <laughs> yeah. uh, that's why I tell everybody, I'm like, if you, ha if you have the ability, you record everything because you time. never know when yep. you're going to get that like, every one time. track, especially yeah. when you're noodling around. Because like, those are like what our best songs come from. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, bro, we were just jamming. Like, you had that riff. Like, what was that? And then we go back and look at it on the tape. So, yep. yeah. yeah, I agree with that. Uh, before we sign off, anything not music or band related you guys want to get out there, talk about, share with the world? Well, I uh, personally do a lot of video work uh, lately, and I'm trying to kind of get myself into that. So if you like anything that you start to see on our page, if you follow us, uh, reach out. I wouldn't mind uh, doing some work, practicing, doing some things for people. So I'm more than willing. Uh, yeah, he's actually any, – anything that is on our page that looks creative, he has done all of it. So yeah. big props to him. But he's fantastic, so reach out to him on his platforms. Yeah, and if you're in the Orlando area, we are looking for other bands to play with so we can book some shows, places, yeah. and play a bunch of originals together. Yes, it's my favorite thing. Yeah. yeah, and this episode was filmed in front of a live studio audience. Shout out to Baby Chimps in the background there. I don't know if it's going to show up on the recording, but they had a few clap tracks and um, <laughs> just out here supporting local music. I appreciate yeah, you guys coming. Yeah, Thanks if you're in Orlando, you dude, definitely check out Featuring Humans. I feel like you guys would be awesome yeah, together on a them. bill. You got a really similar sound. They're the reason we're here. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. you. 
Yeah, hell yeah, man. Well, thanks for coming in. Thanks for doing the show. You guys sounded awesome. Thank you um, so much. You know, make sure to check these guys out. Full send. Check them out on the socials. Check them out online. Stream their music. Buy their merch. Support them. And then make sure to go see them live. You know, support your local live music.